the DNA. Uh, when you look back to some of the uh, esoteric symbolisms of, of ancient times and even look to the Dogon tribe, for an example, uh, describing Digitara and uh, other uh, planets around, look, for an example, Sirius, you see there's a connection always been with outside cosmic forces uh, through the conscious field. So, uh, again, it's, it's all about uh, resolving uh, the collective conscious and it's uh, all around. It's an absolute full circle healing of, uh, of u the unique collective awareness. Uh, so it's absolutely fundamental that, that you uh, start to work on yourself and then clear out what's nicknamed uh, the monkey mind, which is the constant chatter in the back of the conscious mind, which is also making subconscious effects on the body you see our thoughts create patterns of acidity which does great damage on the body and this is why we have to go to sleep we have to like, withdraw from the water in our body just like the tide does so that we can uh, affect repair on the body itself so again that was some incredible information there frank uh we're going to see if we can move on to some other callers uh, and then uh, possibly wrap it up for tonight because uh, we're just about yep. out of time. Yep. Uh, okay, uh, we're looking at Texas as the next uh, caller in queue. So, Texas, you're on the air. Uh, hi. Uh, hey, how's hi. it going, Frank? Good. Uh, guys, uh, uh, two two things for you. Uh, first question is... Um, uh we've uh we're about we're at the point of redemption on this uh, uh property and uh uh we only have to april to re to for the redemption period uh so where do you suggest we start okay so the the key thing with redemption is that um you you must redeem yourself as a tenant in dishonor so when you think of a mortgage, a mortgage is a lien, loan, lease. It's also a promissory note. It's also insurance. So it's a whole range of things, yeah? But they okay. hide the lease element in there. You don't get told you're a tenant, yeah? Okay. So if you're a tenant and you don't pay rent, then what are you? Delinquent. Delinquent. So what's the rent that you haven't been paying? Uh it's uh, seven hundred dollars a month. Uh, you sure that that's the rent? Oh. What do economists call? Sorry, what do you, what do economists call interest? They call it rent. Economic rent. So, how much is the interest per month? Oh, it's about. Per month? It's about a uh, uh, hundred dollars. Okay. And how many months have you not paid rent to the landlord? Uh, twelve. Can you afford twelve hundred dollars? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, then you pay twelve hundred dollars, and you've redeemed yourself as a tenant. Uh huh. Yes, uh, it's okay. an aha moment, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, got a, I got another one here for you. Uh, my buddy, he went Rich. to uh, he went to uh, sentencing last week, and yep. uh, he stood up and he pretty much uh, followed the uh, court examples. You know, he said he was a true title holder, and uh, he read off his statement that he had sent off his. Uh, uh, depot to vital statistics for them to correct their roles, and that yep. there was no uh, there was no uh, argument, and that the court was in there was no controversy, and that the court was in dishonor. And yep. uh, the judge said to him, uh, "That's a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't I don't believe you. I think you're just trying to keep from going to prison." Right. And uh, at that point, uh, he said. Uh, he said to uh, to my friend, uh, you're going to be uh, given 24 hours to read the sentencing report, and uh, you're going to be brought back here for sentencing. At that point, my friend said, I refuse your offer. 
And the judge said, well, what is it that you want to do? Do you want a public defender? Do you want uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> Do you do you want do you want to hire an attorney? Do you want time to get that an attorney? Like the guy she it, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. And uh, Frankie wouldn't believe it, but he actually said this five times. I, I I've ordered the transcript so we can more analyze this. But as soon as they come in, I'm gonna I'm gonna email them to you so you can read them over for yourself. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I forgot one part to mention that he had also revoked his power of attorney from the lawyer. And uh, so the. Uh, so the judge says, uh, "Oh, do you want to get another public defender, or do you want to hire, do you want time to hire a lawyer, or do you want to represent yourself?" And this is where Bruce uh, kind of got confused, and he said, "I want he I want to represent myself." And we actually discussed him saying, actually telling the judge, "Well, I need more time because I've got to find another lawyer to sign my contract to come here to represent me about this matter." Because we know no lawyer signed the contract. We we've, we've, we've sent the contract out to, like, a, a law firm that had 200 lawyers, and not one would sign it because yep. you, have to re- you have to reveal their fiduciary duties and malpractice insurance, which they don't have. Yeah. And, uh, well, we were, you know, that was actually uh, 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 our tactic to try to buy more time. But he actually offered Mr. Hooper this uh, proposal five times. He kept, you know, every time uh, Mr. Hooper would refuse his offer, the judge would say, well, I'm just trying to make sure your rights are protected here. Do you want a public defendant or do you want uh, time to get another attorney or do you want to represent yourself? And, you know, Mr. Hooper, was, Mr. H was kind of confused, so he kept saying, I want to represent myself. Well, eventually uh, they sent him away that Monday and brought him back the next day, Tuesday. And on Tuesday, uh, the judge actually made the offer two more times. You know, and uh, Mr. Hooper kept saying, "I want to represent myself." And at that point, I think uh, the judge uh, just kind of uh, gave up because Mr. As you said, Mr. Hooper was uh, he was contradicting his, himself because uh, he shouldn't want to represent himself to the court. Is that right? Well, yeah. I mean, what he should have done is is um, uh, the the until you read the sent like the sentence gets gets put to you. You know, I extend it to you to four, five years or six years. Then you say I refuse your offer. But you can't refuse an offer until it's made, right? Right. So he, he, look, these are serious things. You know, people facing prison is a serious thing. People losing the home is a serious thing. The children is a serious thing. And I'm, I'm not making light of the seriousness. I'm just, I was chuckling just because... You know, on one hand, the judge is all saying it's all rubbish, and then on the other hand, he suddenly realizes that you know there's, there's more to it. Right. No, no one is supposed to be an expert in an alien world designed to be alien, intimidating, and, and draining our energy. So if you're comfortable in that place, there's something not right. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's designed to be intimidating. But I would say that he's lucky to have a friend like you, and hopefully... Has he gone? Actually, has he been told the sentence yet? Well, it, what ended up happening Tuesday was uh, after the judge made the, uh, the offer the second time, Mr. Hooper again said, I want to represent myself. And then the judge says, well, I'm, I'm sentencing you to three years, and uh, 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 you're going to do three years, and if, uh, if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you for your appeal. Right. So then did he decline the offer? In the end, he he let a little he let a little time go he 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 let a, a space of time go by, but he eventually said, "I refuse your offer." But at that point, uh, they were marching him out of the courtroom. Yes, no, you see, that's the thing. It's it's um, yeah. Look, I mean, when when you're dealing with the decline of of a system and it's falling apart, yeah. Hmm. It's a bit like saying to the to the, the 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 German army as it marches through Paris, you know, you know, it's an outrage. Well, you can say it all you like; they're still going to march, aren't they? I mean, the system is broken. He's done his his best he can appeal right. um, on the fact that he refused to accept. But okay. it, 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 un, unfortunately, unfortunately, we're dealing with a system that that is so broken, if you blink 
in their system, they will take a mile. And unfortunately, he blinked at the wrong time. I know right. it sounds ridiculous. I mean, you know, we're, we're not playing who wants to be a millionaire. We're playing, you know, three years of my life and possibly right. my physical life in prison. You know, it's not an easy place to survive. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, there's the appeal process, and the appeal process is he declined the offer. Yeah? Now, do you think we should go straight to uh, uh, a habeas corpus with the feds, or the state offers you what they call uh, call here uh, an appeal at the state level, or should you just go straight to a habeas with the feds? Well, the habeas in their system, I would, you know, we're working on great roots. The problem with the habeas corpus is that um, under the present system and the Patriot Act, it, mm-hmm. only, it, it only exists as a name process. They call it habeas corpus, but it's no longer a writ. It's I'll not a proper writ. It's just in name only. Right. Uh, so there's... We're working on some, some remedies at the moment that are going to be very important with writs. I, I just say to you, um, I would follow the appeal process that the state provides mm-hmm. and make sure that he signs everything VC, via coactus. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Uh, yes, he, yes, he knows about that because uh, he actually signed the advice of rights uh, without prejudice. And he actually sent the uh, judge uh, a copy of his, uh, or sent him sent the judge, a live born record, uh, a yep. copy of his trust ID, and a copy of his deed poll, and uh, a notice um, saying that thou shalt not bear false witness, or thou shalt, and thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's property. He sent that yep. to the judge in chambers before sentencing. And I think it had a lot to do with the judge uh, not uh, running out of the courtroom or yelling at him. Uh, the only thing that the judge said, you know, was that's a bunch of mumble jumbo. And it, we could tell it kind of, it kind of rattled uh, Mr. Hooper a little bit off his square, but he and he, he, he didn't fully climb back up on his square because he shouldn't have let that time go by. No, to, uh, that was the offer. That's a, this is the danger of filling your mind full of facts when you walk into court. Yeah. Yeah. Because the risk is that you miss the important moments, and he missed an important moment. Now, he's not supposed to be a, an expert in handling that environment. It's an alien environment. So look at the appeal process. Um, you've got plenty to go on, I'm sure, and good uh-huh. luck with it. Okay? And we'll, we'll, we'll be working on our notes as well as a help. But I think in the urgency of what he needs to do, I think you should keep going on the appeal process in the state. Oh, yeah, because uh, I was wondering, uh, part of the appeal process uh, being that no one will sign his contract. Is he not denied due process? Yes, it's a it's a faulty it's a um, he was denied due process, so the the um, the pro, the cause is is flawed. Yes. Okay. Totally yeah, because yeah, because we actually talked about how there's no cause of action if there's no affidavit from any uh, man or woman, and that his uh, when he first had before he he fired the attorney he actually said that to the judge too uh, once the attorney was fired because he revoked his uh, power of attorney that he sent the uh, yes. judge a copy of that also. And uh, he said, I-, I motion to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction. And uh, he he said that uh, he was denied due process because his lawyer did not advise him that he had an affirmative defense, being that there's yep. no other affidavit in the record. Well, what I, what I do, and I'm just mindful of time because we've only got a couple of questions before we sort of wrap up. Uh, it's really important. It's a man's life. So I don't want to, I don't want to um, appear to be you know, dismissing or, or rushing too quickly. Go through the appeal process, I think, is, is, is very important in light of what you've, you've said. I would also um, say that um, it is an example of the, the way the courts are currently still just um, blastering through. Mm-hmm. But if, if it was absolutely false, that judge would not have behaved the way he did. So, um, good luck with it. Keep us okay. informed. Let us know, and um, keep keep going back to the site and seeing the updates we're doing. All right. All righty. Sounds good. Thank you so much, okay. Frank. And you are a blessing to us all. Okay. Good on you. See you.
Great. Thank you so much, for Texas, for uh, for that information. Uh, we have gone over tonight, but uh, we want to uh, just end it there. We don't have any more uh, calls in the queue. And uh, we also want to 